the gangster you love to hate is back and we're going to talk about his latest crime spree in our review of torpedo 1972 number one from a blaze publishing see you in three Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Torpedo 1972, number one from Ablaze Publishing. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. Your attention is greatly appreciated. And stay tuned to, to the end for our rating and score. In this issue, let's talk about the credits. The Torpedo number 1972, number one, is written by Enrique Sanchez Abuli, art by Eduardo Rizzo. Letters by Vibrant Studios, and the cover art is also done by Eduardo Rizzo, who does the coloring as well. If you're not familiar with Torpedo, uh, that's the nickname of the famous gangster, at least in fiction anyway, uh, Luca Torelli Petrosino. Say that five times fast. But he has a long and storied history of being in assorted media, primarily in comics, but also even in stage plays, where he's portrayed as a ruthless gangster who commits every crime and sin under the sun. Uh, everything from killing one person, killing many people in the, as far as mass murder, robbery, rape, everything you can think of, it's all there. And following his exploits is a form of, if you want to call it uh, exploitation, even giallo, if we're talking about Italian storytelling. So where are we with uh, Mr. Torpedo today? Well, we're flash forward to 1972. He's definitely a senior man. He's pushing 80-ish, somewhere in that realm. Uh, he's hanging out with his longtime assistant named Rascal, who is sort of like his right-hand man who just does whatever he needs him to do. And we have an enterprising young man who works for the Wall Street Journal, and he wants to score an interview with Mr. Torpedo to find out if he'd be willing to name names for an unsolved murder case. And he brings along his very lovely... Uh, fiance by the name of Wendy and the two arrange a meeting and for an exchange of cash and some favors they decide to agree on an interview where Mr. Torpedo names names about who killed who and when was such and such buried and, and all the things you can think of that a, a journalist would just love to have for an expose about a, a gangster's exploits. Later Wendy says come, come to my studio tomorrow and I want to do a photo shoot with you in different poses and different types of um, scenarios that'll accompany this article and that'll make it a complete package and it'll be fantastic. Unfortunately for Miss Wendy, who thinks she can handle himself in, in the face of the, one of the world's most ruthless and heartless gangsters, uh, she goes through the photo shoot, but her <laughs> she gets a little too close and she winds up being sexually assaulted in the process. The journalist, James, uh, is incensed by the by his girlfriend, who actually turns out will be his fiance's sexual assault, and he decides to change the names in the article to blame Torpedo for some of the deaths enraging the uh, rival family whose uh, patriarch was killed many years ago. And so that sets off a chain reaction of events where Torpedo now will have to take go on the offensive to defend himself for a murder he didn't commit but in reaction to a revenge article that lied about his involvement in a prior murder. How's that for twists and turns? You get all of it. There's a lot of it. Uh, so fun factor, factoid, is, is this particular gangster ever been a real person? He's inspired by several real gangsters, but technically, specifically, no, he's not a real character. Although he has appeared in comics in several different incarnations in his own series more than once, primarily in European comics and has been translated into English, and even uh, the some of the comics have even been adapted into a stage play. Uh, also, as a side note, uh, some of the Americanized, or I should say English translated versions of the original Torpedo comics have been notoriously censored and uh, smoothed out, if you will, because some of the violence uh, in, in various aspects was considered too extreme for American audiences. So if you ever want to pick up the comics, and you like sort of the purity of the original version, pick up the European copies. They may not be in English, but they'll, you'll get the full story, whereas the American English translated versions tend to be a little bit more censored. So what do we like about Torpedo 1972, uh, number one from the Blaze Publishing? Uh, if you like that style of storytelling, giallo, 
sort of very violent, uh, very ruthless, nefarious main characters where the, the, act, the act of his evil, the acts of his villainy is sort of the draw. It's sort of like witnessing a monster in action from the monster's point of view. Now, the, obviously, uh, Wendy and James are, are the victims of violence, so you, they should be the protagonists. You sort of want to be there on their side, but at the same time, they're a little bit opportunistic, and so it's sort of like poking a force of nature. And that's where Torpedo sort of has his unique form of charm, is he's just a form of nature. He is everything ugly about humanity incarnate. And so it's just sort of, it's almost like a disaster film where you're just watching it play out and you can't look away, like what, like a train wreck in slow motion. So a lot of that charm, a lot of that uh, uh, focus is there on Torpedo, even though he, technically speaking, he's the villain of the story. And this is one of those rare circumstances where it sort of works out. It's not quite horror, but it's 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 very much ugly violence and uh, just human ugliness of the human soul, if you want to call it that. What didn't we like about Torpedo? Well, there is a little bit of English translation bumps here and there in the dialogue. James is supposed to be a New Yorker. Wendy is supposed to be a New Yorker. Their manner of speaking, especially for 1972, does not at all sound like a New Yorker in 1972. So there are some bumps here and there with the English translation, especially in the dialogue. It's not bad, but there are one or two ways, manners of speech in the vernacular that it sounds like weirdly robotic, like it sounds like it's a translation. And that's that's a little bit of a bummer. It's not too bad, but it's but you notice it here and there, and it's just something you gotta you gotta look past if you want to enjoy the story. Uh, okay, well, let's talk about the art from Eduardo Rizzo. Uh, exactly the kind of art that you would expect and want for this type of story. It has that look and feel and vibe of uh, sort of grimy, gritty people in New York City during 1972. It's not hyper stylized or it's not hyper detailed. It's very much uh, sort of caricature-ish, but in, a, but in a sensible way. So the art is good, it makes sense. The coloring is good, it makes sense. It all sort of works together to match the tile and the vibe of this, uh, the tone and the vibe of this story. So, if you if you're if you're looking for like Marvel level or DC level of artwork, that's not what this is about. This is very much a a, a very unique niche kind of story. But if you like that type of storytelling, the, the art suits it very well. So, final thoughts: What do we think about Torpedo 1972 number one from Ablaze Publishing? Uh, it's the gangster you love to hate. So if you like Torpedo Comics or if you're kind of interested in what he's about, I would recommend going back and picking up some of the earlier series. Uh, and, and even still, you might find some issues with translation, but that's up to you. Um, he, he's just, he's a horrible person. <laughs> he's just evil. Uh, or not evil in the in the, in the demonic sense, but evil in just the, the, the most... Uh, representative of the ugl ugliness of humanity, but he's a force of nature, and you just you know that he, if you cross him, you're just going to get the worst of it, and that makes a whole lot of sense uh, for the story. So we we like that the character feels authentic to how we know Torpedo from past stories and past series. Um, the series of events plays out with lots of twists and turns to keep you engaged. The story is pretty quick. Uh, moving in the pacing and except for a few problems with the dialogue translations from I think Italian to English overall it's a it's an engaging read I won't say entertaining it's sort of more more like a, a weird curiosity that definitely holds your attention so therefore we're going to give Torpedo 1972 number one from a Blaze Publishing an 8.5 out of 10. I hope you like this review if you want to listen to more reviews just like this one stay tuned through the outro